Okay. Our next presenter is uh, Karen Bell, also from UE Bristol. Um, Karen, it's the usual setup of 10 minutes talk and then questions and answers. Um, without further ado, the floor is yours. Okay, great, thank you. So I'm going to talk about relational pedagogy. Um, mentioned really throughout the day, either explicitly or implicitly, I think. So um, where I started from, I did a small research project for my postgraduate certificate in academic professional practice. And this was a question that I started with, which teaching and learning practices increase undergraduate student satisfaction across the university? So there are various reasons that a lot of people would be interested in this question. And also I wanted to know how to improve my teaching. Um, so the kind of sub questions were to look at what um, do the, the undergraduate students think um, helps their learning and what do the program leaders think uh, helps learning and so what kind of practices should encourage. I did distinguish between the high and low scoring courses on the NSS. Um, so just to say a little bit about the National Student Survey, the NSS. Um, so it may not uh, correlate exactly with student satisfaction, um, but it, it is a kind of starting point. So there's these nine themes that probably, at least in the UK, we're quite familiar with now. Um, so when I looked at the literature on student satisfaction in general, there's a kind of slight disconnect between those who think that what's important is factors other than teaching. So it's the accommodation, the extracurricular activity, social life, that kind of thing. But then a lot of other um, analysts thought that um, uh, teaching is actually the most important for student satisfaction. And especially the kind of contact between the, the teachers and the students. So, um, so yeah, so Sutherland, for example, talked a lot about um, things more or less to do with the course um, and also pointed out that if we're just looking at satisfaction, then maybe we have to dumb down higher education because module difficulty can be uh, something that makes students dissatisfied. Um, but um, Green and others said, well, you know, it's really about teaching variables and teaching quality that links to student satisfaction. So um, UE is interesting. So in the course of this explanation, um, some of what the students say is not very good. <laughs> um, but I don't think UE is an exception um, because I know from uh, I became I was a mature student, so I went to university later in life, so I can well remember <laughs> um, these interactions and. Also, you know, I know other people that are students. I've also taught in three different universities. So I know um, that the UE experience is probably not that different. And we do tend to do quite well, 11th in the UK for student satisfaction. Um, so I looked at the literature and then I set up some focus groups with the students and then I interviewed um, the high and low performing um, uh, teachers, I didn't go out of my way to say they were high and low performing, I was just interested in um, how they approached uh, different aspects of their teaching and they and then I analysed it thematically. So um, basically I'm focusing really here on the students because I have to say like there wasn't that much difference between what the teachers or the students said in low and high performing courses so I've sort of taken out that out of the picture they had the same kind of complaints and positive things that they put forward. And the, the teachers didn't say very different things apart from the high performing ones were a little bit more likely to say that they actually did what the students wanted. <laughs> um, but there was such a small sample that's a, bit, a little bit difficult to say much from that. But anyway, so the students said that, that, that it was important uh, the the teacher's personal qualities much more important than the course qualities or the non-teaching context. So they said what was important was the presentation style, 
their approachability, their empathy, positive st staff student interactions, and their av availability. And uh, so in terms of presentation, they said they wanted the lecturers to be energetic, engaging, and interactive. Um, so in terms of the quality of the relationship, these are the kind of examples that they gave. Um, as Suzanne said earlier on today, um, the lecturer knowing their name is just a classic example. Um, responding quickly to communications, showing interest in what they think, so sort of following up on what they say, uh, checking up on the student if they've been absent, um, just generally being friendly and patient, and definitely being even-handed, so not showing any favouritism, it being quite obvious why they're getting certain kinds of feedback and also just a sense of going beyond um, your obligations. So uh, this does, it not quite fits in with the NSS National Student Survey themes because some things came out about the teaching techniques and sensitivity that aren't captured in that. So that's interesting. And these are just some of the examples from the different focus groups of what um, uh, people said, so uh, being engaging, um, checking out, asking what you think, um, being patient, uh, just not at least not being impatient, um, and you know some praise. So it was quite a bit of praise. Um, uh, you know, feeling on the spot came up quite a lot. Um, and I know this is, I do think this is quite common, is not wanting to feel on the spot and not wanting to sort of feel intimidated by the lecturer. Um, so this supports uh, some of the literature, uh, literature about teaching quality being important, presentation style sometimes being more important than the actual content and the interactions being important. Um, so overall, I felt that it, it showed the importance of um, uh, this uh, relational pedagogy and especially being caring and sensitive. Um, so the relational pedagogy literature, which I then looked into some more, um, is uh, you know, really important to, to be approachable outside lectures. All of these interactions foster a sense of belonging and trust and because I'm in geography we actually always get 100% student satisfaction and we do because we have field trips and we I say always I think for the last three years I don't know before that I wasn't there um, so we have the field trips and we get actually get to know the students um, and uh, you know we had so we were able to socialize with them as well but also it's pointed out that this is difficult with neoliberalism because obviously if we're having to um, always think about the numbers game <laughs> um, although student satisfaction is part of that numbers game it's more of like a ticking boxes and really go in the extra mile and the things that you'd like to do if you had the time and um, you know you weren't being judged on the criteria that are more to do with profit making um so minutes. thank you very much uh, this is just a little cartoon of what could happen if you get too, too far <laughs> appreciated by your students and then lastly just the references and that's it thank you karen a really interesting um, presentation lots of positive comments um in in the chat so thank you thank you for your talk we have um, a couple and some virtual uh, uh, claps going on. Um, we have a couple of interesting questions um, in, in the chat. Um, and I think um, one of them uh, was from uh, Jane Saville, who uh, Jane was asking around the, the link to whether students prefer expertise or, or whether expertise materializes in different way in the classroom. So whether it's kind of subject content expertise or or, or, or expertise in terms of teaching and learning. And that was interesting how that features in your students' responses. Yeah, um, uh, well, I get the impression that 
we can do expertise quite well because we have quite a lot more knowledge than the students so sometimes it's a bit difficult for them to know <laughs> how expert we are you know sometimes it maybe just comes down to confidence but things like um the relationship are just much easier to judge and feel and i think they probably just assume that we know what we're talking about um but they can't always assume that we're going to be nice to them you know and not everyone has had a positive experience of education behind them so people do come to the class with possible fears you know um and it's good if we can make them feel relaxed thank you um another interesting point of view is around so you demonstrated to us what students value um, and my question to you is, how do you think we can develop that? Um, it actually links really nicely to Rachel's um, talk about what, what it means to, 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 to be a, a lawyer and practitioner. So, so how do you develop that empathy, uh, that um, interpersonal skills um, and, and that approachability that, that you talk about? Oh, well, I mean, there, there are these things that you can just do. You know, you can just do these. I mean, you don't even, it doesn't depend on any kind of personality characteristic. You can just do it, decide to do it. Um, but, I mean, I, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm delving into the realm of psychology here, but it is a topic I'm interested in. But, I mean, I just think you have to sort of work on yourself, you know, to not not be somebody who's cut off from your own emotions and feelings. And then that enables you to empathize with people and then you just automatically want to um to help people and make them feel good and you're just aware of their uh, the possible things that can go wrong um and and i think it's only when you're like particularly cut off from your self that you can be unkind Although I do think the neoliberal thing is <laughs> just put so much pressure on all of us that mm -hmm. sometimes if you're stressed, you're not going to be as kind as your heart feels. <laughs> anyway, just thank you. Yes, it's 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 an interesting one to unpack. Uh, there's an, a comment from uh, that from Alison that they, she talks about the perception of availability and openness is is, is quite important. Um, thank you, Karen, so much for your contribution, um, and thank you for comment for colleagues' comments and discussions. We, I'm going to pass you on 